You know, we make it our business to, excuse me, you wanna tell me about your business? Do you have a card? I can't leave the shot. It's not within my reach. But that's not the case tonight on Neotropolis. This is not business as usual. Welcome to Neotropolis. We are not business as usual. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Evans. You want stories on unique business, right? Well, we bring it to you. That covers established to start up and occasionally some on the verge of doing so. And if you happen to be in that earliest phase, you'll really want to watch tonight's show. We'll feature a special program in Northeast Ohio that helps aspiring entrepreneurs get on track and moving in the right direction. But now my director tells me we have to move to regional business news from the Neotropolis Good Business News Aggregator. This is the Good Business News along the I-77 corridor for the week of July 18th. Tuesday's Akron Beacon Journal community section reports that retail in Fairlawn is thriving. The shops of Fairlawn has 100% occupancy. In Rosemont Commons, the old Verizon building will be the new home for Fidelity, an investment firm. Down the street, Summit Mall manager David Hesser said the mall has reached 100% occupancy with about 10 new stores opening this year. According to Fairlawn Mayor Bill Roth, the retail market is good in the city. Tuesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Bering Distributors Incorporated has opened a West Coast branch in Los Angeles. Wednesday's Akron Beacon Journal and Cleveland Plain Dealer business sections report that Key Corp is seeing its best lending business in three years. KeyCorp's second quarter earnings soared because of lower loan losses and expenses. The company's profit for the second quarter was $234 million. That amounted to $0.25 cents per share for the quarter, up $0.03 cents from last year. Key originated about $9.5 billion in new or renewed loans and commitments to consumers and businesses during the second quarter. Wednesday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that Belden Brick and Canton has bought the assets of Lawrenceville Brick Company, a longtime Southern Virginia brick manufacturer. The acquisition gives Belden Brick the ability to make more than 500 million standard size bricks annually. Chairman William H. Belden Jr. said the acquisition is a bet the United States economy and construction industry will eventually bounce back. Thursday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that Babcock and Wilcox Power Generation Group Incorporated has been awarded a $26 million contract to design and supply two dry scrubber systems for Consumers Energy's DE Carn power plant in Michigan. Babcock and Wilcox said engineering on the contract has begun in Barberton. Thursday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that Summit County home sales rose about 11 percent in June compared to May. Real estate firm Howard Hanna, Ohio, said they are seeing an incredible pickup in the marketplace over the last two months. The average sales price last month was up about 26 percent from May's average. This is the Good Business News along the I-77 corridor for this week. Neotropolis is your source for good business news. Location, transportation and infrastructure, incentives, industry cluster, franchise assistance. These will be included on the really good stuff for business file. There are also many of the benefits for business in the Mahoning Valley. And if you'd like to get a company going there, it just may be within your reach. But right now, our next order of business is with our content partner, the Business Journal. It's time for the Weekly Buzz. I'm Stacia Ertis, and this is the Business Journal Weekly Buzz for Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Youngstown State University's annual fund sets a new record. The campaign brought in $1.7 million from more than 4,000 donors in fiscal 2011. That's an all-time high and a 16 percent increase over last year. It's the fourth consecutive year that the annual fund has surpassed the $1 million mark. Farmers National Bank of Canfield earns a five-star rating. Farmers National received the rating from the Bauer Financial Group, an independent bank research firm that's been analyzing and reporting on the financial condition of the nation's banking industry since 1983. On the cover of the mid-July edition of the Business Journal, out now, Dan O'Brien reports industrial parks get inquiries as businesses eye expansion. Industrial and business parks in the region are poised for growth this year with prospects improving and lenders willing to support startup and expansion projects. At Caslow Industrial Park, 
Demolition is underway on a 350,000 square foot building that was once part of the Youngstown Sheet and Tube Company's Struthers Works. It's part of a $1 million expansion here at the park. Behind me you can see the demolition of what we call the I building. The project is an Ohio Jobs Ready site, which when completed, the state will market. A big plus for Caslo. The final project will be roadway extension, utility extension, and grading of the materials yard. So overall, we'll have a probably approximately about 70 acres ready for development, be shovel ready, roadway will be in, all the utility will be there, and hopefully we can find an end user to come in. Also in the latest edition, real estate brokers see shale boom. George Nelson reports it's not here yet, but there's a lot of activity on the horizon. The market for industrial real estate isn't as active as broker associate James Grants would like, but he says it has picked up markedly, one result of natural gas exploration in the region's shale deposits. We've had several inquiries for office space for the um, landmen that go out and negotiate contracts. We've also had inquiries from pipe companies and uh, drilling companies. Grant says they've been showing a lot of industrial space lately, including the vacant Lear Corporation building in Lordstown. Very close proximity to the Lordstown assembly plant, and it's a terrific location for uh, any of their vendors to work from. The building's equipped with several loading docks, drive-in doors. We also talked with real estate brokers in Brookfield, Howland, and Poland in the mid-July edition of the Business Journal, Out Now. For the Daily Buzz, I'm George Nelson. And those are this week's headlines. Be sure to check out the Buzz Newscast every business day online at businessjournaldaily.com. I'm Stacia Ertis. We'll see you next week. And now it's time for a Neotropolis fact. Did you know that 80% of the U.S. academic research in polymers is done in Northeast Ohio? Developing ideas into viable ventures. That's the goal of a program to assist entrepreneurs, as well as those already in business, in the Youngstown Warren area. Through the Mahoning Valley Chamber of Commerce, the Regional Entrepreneurial Assistance Channel, also known as REACH, helps those who consider entrepreneurship as a way to a secure future. From feasibility analysis to business plans to financing, REACH offers that and much more to business owners to navigate on a course to success. Jennifer Boris had the chance to get a little closer and shows us what it's all about. A nonprofit here in Youngstown is not only helping startup companies, but also current companies continue to grow, and it is definitely not business as usual. Rick Trovecki is president of Falmer Screw Machine in Boardman. Well, we're third generation, um, precision machining. The uh, company was started in 1947. Uh, my mother's father, then my father got involved, and then there were four brothers that got involved. The company has gone through some major changes over the years, like in 1974 when it moved from Youngstown to Boardman. It currently has about 17 employees, but the numbers have fluctuated. Our peak was about 25, and that was probably in 2004, 2005. Then part of what we experienced was um, the standard product that we make went to China. And that competition with then the downturn in the economy reduced our sales by about 40% and therefore employees went also. So we were down probably as low as nine of us, and now things are starting to come back a little bit. He has Jim Rollins to thank for a big part of that turnaround. Jim is the director of the Youngstown Chamber of Commerce's REACH program. REACH program is an acronym for Regional Entrepreneurial Assistance Channel. It was a program that began in about January 2009, and it assists um, people who want to start businesses but it also assists people who uh, have a business and need help with it, either in the way of financing or consulting. Loss of sales is, is major. Uh, so, you know, what we've had to try to do is first, you know, find the bottom and, and how do we become profitable from these new numbers. So that's kind of where Jim, when we met up with uh, him, where he came in to help us uh, find these baseline numbers and then how do we go forward from there. My background is, uh, is accounting basically. Um, I have a degree in accounting from YSU 
And I was in a CPA firm when I first got out of school. I've spent uh, more than 25 years as a controller and chief financial officer for small family-owned businesses. That's been my entire career. I also did consulting work with a consulting firm uh, in that period. He was a consultant in 2008 with Magnet, the Manufacturing Advocacy Growth Network, and that's when he met Rick. Through the chamber, one of my one of my colleagues here, who I've known for many years, um, he had referred this company to me called Falmer Screw Machine up in Boardman. So through Magna, I went on site and started working with them. And it wasn't very long, through a series of events, this project came up and Magnet sort of dropped them as a client and I picked them up and brought them into this program. Jim spent two years consulting with them, examining how to reduce costs, retrain some current employees to do things in-house and eliminate extra expenses and find new markets to reach out to. They had taken a significant downturn in sales, over 50 percent. Cash flow became critical. Um, so we put a lot of different processes in in that period of time. And last June, we got them pretty well stabilized. Their backlog came up. Uh, we had instituted sales processes. We have a new sales um, uh, representative out there, foreign manufacturer's rep. And uh, so the business began to turn around. Where their professional and his professionalism came into play, um, you know, we don't have those people on our staff. So, you know, when it comes to law and accounting, we were outsourcing that. The law firms and the accounting firms are good, and we have great relationships, but they didn't have the time to do the nitpicking that Jim was able to do. You go in and you find that they're lacking in processes and things that they need to stabilize the company and also to move it forward. So I assist them with that. In, in putting processes in they haven't had in the past, getting the company back on track, and then making it strong enough that it can go forward and survive. Jim says they see over 100 clients a year through the REACH program, but only do about a dozen projects in that time period. And we're unique in one aspect in that um, we put people through a feasibility measure, which is we more or less make business sense of their idea as well as lending sense. And if we can get past that point, we'll actually write their entire business plan and source all the financing for them. I will say the majority of people that come in are startups, and that's why we don't have as many come to fruition because of the fact that through one reason or another, it'll sort of fade out. They're just getting information and they have to think about it, and we don't, we don't always see them again. But the program has a great success rate for the projects that they do take on, about 80 to 90 percent. On the business sense side, we try to, we try to assess with people their backgrounds for doing what they want to do. Some people come in with an idea, have absolutely no training. You know, I want to open a restaurant, but they've never worked or run a restaurant. So that's one criteria. Do you have a background? Do you have knowledge of the industry? Do you have knowledge of the business? The REACH program is intended to help these people put together a plan that a bank can accept, that perhaps an, uh, an outside investor can accept. And it all becomes part of the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that's being developed throughout Northeast Ohio. Jumpstart is a big part of that. The University of Akron Research Foundation is a part of it. So it's just one, uh, one more brick in the wall of building entrepreneurship here. Bob Schalfant is the owner and operator of NEO Management LLC, a Cleveland investment and property management firm. He's also the director of the University of Akron's Fitzgerald Institute for Entrepreneurial Studies, allowing him to teach other entrepreneurs about what he's learned over the years. Fitzgerald Institute was founded to uh, promote entrepreneurship uh, throughout the community in the region. Uh, right now, my charter is to reach out to the other schools within the university to promote entrepreneurship among the undergraduate students and the graduate students as well. We want to uh, establish new businesses, create uh, new technologies, and take advantage of the technology that's being developed within the University of Akron. He thinks the REACH program is a great way to help support new and existing businesses. Every innovative idea builds on ideas that have come before us. Uh, nothing is entirely new. Something always builds on something that's already been invented. If we look at the amount of knowledge and amount of information that's being created every single day, it's incredible. Over the last 10 years, we've, we've obtained and, in, and discovered and created new knowledge that exceeds all the knowledge in, in the history of mankind. It's unbelievable. So with all the new innovation that's out there, if you know that new innovation builds on older innovations, the opportunities are better today than they have ever been in the history of man. 
it's just such an exciting time to be alive. We get a lot of positive feedback from the clients about after they've come here how helpful this service is. We see a lot of people because of the economy and things who really start to say I want to do my own thing and they have no idea where to begin. So coming here is, is the first part of it and we don't charge the council and we don't charge for anything in seeing them or talking with them as many times as they need. It's only in the packaging side that we're starting to do that. So far this year, Reach's economic impact has been about $2.2 million in financing for six existing businesses. It's also resulted in retaining and creating about 69 jobs. The challenge is maintaining funding for the program. Well, actually, the Chamber is an administration of the funding. We got a grant in 2008 um, that ran out here at the end of uh, May. And so now they have me continuing the program, although we picked up an additional funding source through uh, the Chase Foundation out of Columbus, about 20000 It's going to continue us for a few more months. But they have me also looking and charging fees for the service just to keep this program alive. We've always had funding problems. I mean, we get it, and it's hard to get renewal, especially with the way funding's gone with the federal government, because the original one was an earmark grant, and all the earmarks have gone away. In the meantime, Jim says they'll continue to reach out to businesses in need. I enjoy this. I've always enjoyed this. I mean, I tell people I can, you know, I've always made more money in the private sector, but this work I do, I like seeing it come to fruition with these people realizing their dreams and getting started. And that includes all different kinds of businesses. We've helped at scrapbooking startups. I mean, we've done um, an indoor playground for children, you know, and, and there's a uh, soap manufacturing business we assisted. And so there's a great variety, and it does impact the community by bringing small business and maintaining it, giving people another option to a career. And a lot of times these are people's dreams and hobbies that they're realizing for the first time in their lives. Or, in Rick's case, a company that has been a part of his family for as long as he can remember. I have probably been working here as long as I could stand up. It's been over 35 years, because I came here right out of high school. There are three of us here today, and my one brother that's here is um, 18 years younger than me, and he just had a baby boy. So, you know, there could be a fourth generation. I have a brother who used to be with us that moved to Colorado and his one son who is in the military has expressed interest in coming back to Youngstown after the military and we have given him an opportunity to work here if he chooses to. And now it seems thanks in part from help from REACH, this third generation company will be in business for generations to come. In Boardman, I'm Jennifer Boris for Western Reserve PBS. Well, certainly with the help of REACH, business owners have the chance for a positive future. And with that, it's time now for Into the Future. Into the future. My name is Rick Kesey from Beverage Machine and Fabricators, one of Cleveland and Northeastern Ohio's oldest family-owned and family-operated job shops. We are a heavy industrial machining job shop uh, with vertical turning capacities up to 126-inch diameters, as well as horizontal uh, milling cap capacities and capabilities from 120 inches uh, by 168 and, and uh, everything in between. Also, we have the capability of doing water jet work with a 55 by 100 inch table uh, to hold tolerances within 300 thousandths for all of your flat plate uh, cut work. Uh, we would like to invite you to go to our website, beverage, or bevmachine.com, that's b www.bevmachine.com, to further find out about our capabilities. Light fabrication and welding we also do, and we want to uh, uh, encourage each one of you, uh, being as we have experience with uh, nuclear, we have experience with aerospace, experience with uh, defense work, uh, as well as uh, pressurized vessels, and uh, if whatever it be, a, a long run, a big production type job, or a short run, uh, even prototype work. We are specialists, especially in difficult to machine items uh, and materials from all of your super alloys uh, right on down to uh, aluminums and your standard A36 steel. So please go to Beverage Bev Machine, www.bevmachine.com, and check us out there online and give us a call if we could be of service to you. We always make time for some news on the financial field. And the experts at NCA Financial Planners give us a look at that now with a stock wrap. 
This week's local company is Eaton Corporation, headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio. Eaton is a global technology leader in diversified power management solutions that make electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical power operate more efficiently, as well as effectively, safely, and sustainably. Eaton Corporation had sales in 2010 of $13.7 billion and is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Eaton originally began as a vehicle component supplier, but has diversified to include a broader industrial and commercial focus. Today, Eaton's businesses comprise five distinct segments, electrical, hydraulics, aerospace, truck, and automotive. The company is a global technology leader in electrical components and systems for power quality, distribution, and control. Eaton is a leading manufacturer of hydraulics components, systems, and services for industrial and mobile equipment. In the aerospace industry, Eaton is a worldwide leader in the design, manufacture, and marketing of a comprehensive line of reliable, high-efficiency systems and components for hydraulic, motion control, and aerospace fuel applications for commercial and military use. The Vehicle Group is a global leader in truck and automotive drivetrain and powertrain systems for performance, fuel economy, and safety. Eaton has approximately 70,000 employees and sells products to customers in more than 150 countries. The company has paid dividends on common shares every year since 1923. Eaton stock trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol ETN. The midweek close was $51.10. Year-to-date, the stock is positive 0.68%. And over five years, Eaton is up 57.11%. Back to you, Jim. Culture and entertainment is a very important commodity in Northeast Ohio. And it is always within our grasp with the help of Cool Cleveland's Thomas Mulready. He joins us now to tell you about some other events that are going on in Neotropolis this weekend. What we're talking about is the business of fun. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. And this week, we want to talk about CSAs, that's Community Supported Agriculture. We all know that Ohio is a big agriculture state, but recently what's happened is folks have tried to find ways to bring a lot of the local produce from farms within, say, 50 to 100 miles of your home directly into a neighborhood where you can actually purchase it. And with a CSA, what you do, you make a purchase either at the beginning of, of say, uh, a week in advance to maybe even the entire season in advance and you're paying something like $27 a week to get a share or you could buy a half share and you don't know what you're going to get but you're going to get whatever's fresh that week from a local farm you can trade people exchange recipes it's a great community building thing and we are now at the George Jones farm in Lorain County they started up a program called City Fresh City Fresh now is in over 20 communities throughout northeast Ohio in places like in Summit County there's four locations in Cuyahoga County they've got 10 locations just in Cleveland alone also Berea East Cleveland Lakewood uh, in out here in Lorraine County Amherst Elyria Lorraine and Oberlin so City Fresh is one of your big CSAs but there are a number of individual farms that run CSAs if you're out in the Kent and Garrettsville and Hudson area for example a birdsong farm is running their CSA, so you can check them out. In Columbia Station and Litchfield area, it's Braycheck's Blue Egg Farm. Over in Ashtabula and Kirtland area, True Earth Organics would be the place to look for your CSA. And in Akron, the uh, Pacarina Farm. And so check out your local CSA community-supported agriculture all throughout Northeast Ohio. This is Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Neotropolis. Always remember, there are things that you can do to help the Northeast Ohio economy. One effective way is to get out to any of the events Thomas told us about and make your investment in fun. You can also position yourself out there and start up a good conversation about the Northeast Ohio economy to the people you know and tell them to spread the word. Also remember to log on to our website, neotropolis.org, and tell us what you think. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next week on Neotropolis, Not Business as Usual.
Funding for Neotropolis has been provided by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, committed to the free enterprise system. First Place Bank is proud to sponsor Neotropolis. As a community bank, First Place Bank believes we are only as strong as the communities we serve. Locally owned businesses are the cornerstone of our communities. We concentrate on helping local businesses make the most of their resources through a variety of services delivered with a community banking touch. The Dominion Foundation. Jumpstart, working with entrepreneurs to accelerate the growth of their high potential businesses to create a more prosperous economic future for Northeast Ohio. Youngstown Business Incubator and Nortech.